Hey people, Frank Saman here. I'm doing a video on Scorpion. Entered it in a contest and uh, I got approved. So I'm in the build off. Haha. <laughs> um, better get moving. Competition looks fierce, so I better show. Uh, right now I'm working on a motor. Can't do anything outside. Can't do any welding work on the tracks or anything. So figure square away the motor. Uh, square away the transmission. I'll show them off. Show you what I got and uh, well, take it from there. Here, show you the motor. Pretty much an 11 horse craftsman. Well, Briggs. It's a Briggs motor. <laughs> Heavy sucker too. Uh, let's see, I really didn't do too much to it. I built this motor up. A few years ago I was going to use it for my riding mower because I needed a stronger motor and uh, I put a bigger one on there which was actually the one I was going to use for my tank but ha, I needed a running motor so I'm stuck with this one which is okay. This is uh, just your everyday running mill. It doesn't even have a cast iron sleeve. It's all aluminum. Uh, as for the insides, I did not polish the rod. I just tore it apart because I had to clean it and replace the crank seal. It was leaking. It's got a new crank seal in there. Made the gaskets. And uh, I ported it. Show you the port job. Because I needed this motor to be torquey. So. Camera in there. Kind of hard to focus. I'm going to focus. But that's the exhaust. Maybe this way. Got a big exhaust right on it. I did the intake too. Let me open the valve. You can see through it. You guys who build these motors know that these things are pretty restrictive in the runners, so be porting it. And being able to just see through it, you're going to get an increase in power. So, so the engine block's pretty much squared away. I got to get a new ignition coil. This one's dead. And uh, for tonight, I'm going to gasket match the head gasket. And then uh, match that to the head. When I come back, I'll show you. Okay, I'm halfway through. I got the gasket in place. I unshrouded around the intake. Let me show you what that means. Uh, get a wrench and point at it. Unshrouded around here. It was actually leaning over into the chamber and when that happens it's crowding around the valve. What I'm doing is filing it or grinding it away to where you have a little more room behind the valve. Every little bit counts. As compared to this side. Okay, I got the gasket strapped to the head, strapped to the engine just to hold it with two bolts. As you can see, I got the gasket ground down, which leaves metal overlapping it. What I'm going to do is use a screwdriver. I'm going to scribe around it to leave a mark so I know where to grind. Hard to do it one hand. 
Okay. Okay, I'm back. I got the head ground down. And there's the aftershock. Let me get a light. Right up to the edge of the gasket now. Okay. Okay, I got it done. Uh, before and after shots will be after the video, after the credits, so look for them. Uh, pretty easy mod to do. Uh, it'll open it up. Like I said, the valve passes the low spot twice as compared to the high spot once, all the way open. Uh, that's why I did it on a slope. And in case you're wondering, Yes, it did drop the compression of the motor, which is fine. That's exactly what I want. Uh, low compression engine are torque monsters. Due to the piston is not fighting the compression coming up at low speeds. As compared to a high revving engine, which would have a high compression, which you don't have to worry about because of the pistons moving fast. That's the reason why uh, low compression motors always make more torque at the low end than a high compression engine at low speed, low RPM. So, that's what I'm building this motor for, low torque. A wise man told me if you build a motor for torque, horsepower will follow. So, that's been my philosophy ever since I heard it. My advice to you. Uh, Rate the video, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks, man. Bye.